All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott of Black Clock Technical College. I'm continuing on with Chapter 8 for 152, 153, our mobile web development iOS or Swift class for the spring 2015 semester. I have gone back in and I've fixed both the programs that didn't work yesterday. I realized I had this line that's right here. I think this line, this line was missing. And that I just did some wordsmithing. In other words, I, I keyed in a few things that weren't in here before and tried to make some superficial changes. And after I did, it appears at least as though this works. So I'm going to run it for you just to show you that. You will again, as always, have the working copies when I get done with this. I will put them out there on the system. So I'm going to run both these for you just to show you that indeed they do work. And then I'm going to pick it up on page 274, loading the UI table view cell from a nib. So we're going to start with that in just a couple minutes. But like I said, I first I've got both of these loaded here and I want to run both of them just so that you can see. And I can prove to you and to myself, oh, I'm sorry, this is the second one. This is the one with the tables. That's fine. I'll just run that one first. So this is the... Uh, table view cell, the first table view cell. Then we're going to build, rebuild another one, I guess, in just a couple minutes. Again, this tends to take a little while. The first time in the morning I load it up, it's about 20 after 6, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a minute or two. lost the connection, which is never a good sign. So usually though after we do that, if we run it again, it comes up fairly quickly and it runs okay. So this stuff should present and name MacBook Air should be on the first line, then color silver on the next line, etc through all the way as it iterates its way through this dictionary or this array, whatever you want to call it. It is a dictionary, though. There's no color on this, so it's just a white background with black text. Again, we could go in and make some changes to it. I'd made none. Now the next one that we're going to look at in just a couple of minutes is loading a UI table view cell from a nib. They are just going and making some changes, I believe, to the current project. So what I'm going to make sure that I do is copy this project that we're looking at right now that I'm attempting to run. It's still not running. And work with the copy. It's taken a long time but before, but this seems like it maybe is a new record here. I do have a lot of stuff open, so it might that might have something to do with it. I don't really know. But this just is going nowhere.
give it one more try. Stop this one more time and try to run it one more time. I'll try to run it from here once. This was, I think, simple simple table, is it? No, it's table cells. Let's see if we can run it that way. The other one is simple table. And again, with that one too, I managed to figure out the error that was in the book. Um, as time goes on and as things change, as you know, syntax sometimes changes. I went on to Stack Overflow and tried a few things, and most of the stuff that they suggested did not work. So I just kind of played with it myself until I eventually got it to work. So I'm not sure why this isn't coming up, but it's not. And rather than waste my time, again, you will have the final one of this, <clears throat> and it will be, you will have all of it on there. So I've got that one. This was the table cells. That was the other one right here with the stars, and they've got the different uh, dwarves on there. Try this one, but I, my guess is I want have much more luck with this than I did with the other one. So, But again, you'll have to take my word for it now because of the problems that we have getting these to run, but um, they both did run. So there's the first one. All right, there's your dwarves, and notice that the first one, and, and they all indent in a little bit for the first four, and then it starts again, and they indent for the first four, and you can see as we work our way through there, they're all in there. All right, so with that finished, let me close this, and maybe it's because I had so much stuff open, so let's try to open table cells one last time, and we'll try to run that also. Again, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I like to prove to you visually as well as just saying it if something is going to work. If you weren't in class yesterday and there were probably about a third to a half of the class was missing, uh, please go back and try to look at the tape. Okay, because we went and built a simple stopwatch app as a class. There's the output on two different lines. Okay, so that's the first dictionary entry, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. All right, so both those are done. You can now stop this. So you have both table cells and simple table. The simple table will now be a simple table two. All right, so I guess I could open that one up. And again, we left off right, whoopsie, right there. It says we're going to recreate the same two line interface we just built in code using the visual layout that capabilities that Xcode provides in Interface Builder. To do this, we'll create a new nib file also called a zip file, that will contain the table view cell and lay out its views using Interface Builder. This will be interesting because I haven't tried it before, so we'll see how it works. Then we, when we need a table view cell to represent a row, we'll just load it into the nib. Okay. In addition, it says we'll also simplify our code in a few other places. Before proceeding, you might want to make a copy, which you can make the changes that follow. Well, that's what I've done. Alternatively, you can find a copy in the table cells project with the current state that you can use. Well, I, I'd rather use my own. First, as it says here, and I'm on the bottom of page 274, we'll make a few changes. The first step is to mark up the name label and color label as outlets so we can use them in Interface Builder. So let's go back in. Let's minimize. And simple table was not the one that I wanted to make a copy of. It was table cells. That was the one. So this one I don't even need. So I'll come into table cells. There's my copy in table cells too. All right, good. So 
Again, the first step, the author says, is we want to mark up the name label and the color label properties as outlets. So let's close a few things, give ourselves some more room here. Okay, there they are. So again, what the author wants us to do is right now we've got the table view, but we're going to need to add a couple more things in here. Now, normally when I try to do things like this, the way the author's doing them right here, and I try to type in this stuff directly rather than the drag drag method that we've been using, I have problems. So we'll see how this works. All right. It says, now remember that setup we did in it with style when we created this? All that can go. In fact, you should just delete the entire method since the setup will now be done in the interface builder. So this in it with style, which we have in here someplace, So I believe they're talking about this right here, this init. It says, remember that we did init with style, <clears throat> reuse identifier. The author says, all that can go. In fact, you should just delete the entire method. And since you're no longer overriding any of the base class initiators, you can delete the one below it too. So all this that you see right here, and let's take some control here. All right, and I guess that name label and that color label that we have over here, I also had them here, and I manually typed them in. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to get those out of there. And we want to change these. Okay, so that'll be IB Outlet. Okay. All right, so we've done that. We've removed those. It says, after all that, you're left with a cell class that's even smaller and cleaner than before. Its only real function now is to shuffle the data between labels. Now we need to recreate the cell and its labels in Interface Builder. All right. <clears throat> so it says here, right-click the table cells in Xcode and select New File from the contextual menu. Tell this does to choose user interface right there. Make sure we pick it, we're picking it in the iOS section rather than the OS section, we are in there. From the upper right pane, select empty. Then click next. On the following screen, use the name name and color cell dot zib
Make sure that the main project directory is selected. As far as I can tell it is. In the group pop-up, press create to create the new nib. Well, of course, it always always put it here, so let's just drag it up there. Next, select the name and color zip to open the file for editing. And again, it's right here. Until now, we've been doing all of our GUI editing inside of storyboards, but now we're using a nib file. Most things are similar, and it will look very similar to you, or familiar to you, but there are a few differences. One of the main ones is, while a storyboard is centered, inside a nib file, there's no such forced pairing. In fact, a nib file often doesn't contain a real controller object at all, rather a proxy referred to as the file owner. If you open up the document outline, in fact, let me try closing this for now. You see it right up above first responder, files owner. All right, look in the library for a table view cell. So I don't need this anymore for right now, at least. I can just, there, I got my whole screen with this. So, so we want here a table view cell. There it is. Drag one of those over the GUI layout area. Okay, looks a little more centered in the book, so looks about right. All right, turning up to page 276. Now I'll bring up the attributes inspector as shown in figure 819. Still after all this time, I forget which is which. One of the first fields you'll see there is identifier right there. That's the reuse identifier that we've been using in our code. All right, set it to cell table identifier. Looking at the rest, none, none, zero, ten. Looks pretty much like the rest of it is set up the way that it is in figure 819. The idea here is when we retrieve a cell for reuse, perhaps because of scrolling a new cell into view, we want to make sure we get the correct cell type. This identifier field lets you tag cells appropriately. Our next step is to edit our table cells content view. First select the table cell in the editing area and drag down its lower edge to make it a little taller. Keep dragging until the height is 65. Okay. Go to the library and drag out four label controls and place them in the content view using figure 820 as a guide. Sure, this isn't going to be perfect, but it'll be fun. Okay. <clears throat> the labels will be too close to the top and bottom for those guidelines to be a much help, but the left guidelines and the alignment guidelines will serve the purpose. Well, I tried doing them anyway, so. Note, you can drag out one label at a time, then option drag to create labels. Well, we know that I just didn't do it that way. Next, double click the upper left label, and change its name to name. Then change the lower left one to color. OK. 
Okay. Then select both the name and the color labels that you've just created. Press the small T button on the Attribute Inspector's font field. This will open up a small panel containing a font pop-up. Click that. And choose System Bold. If needed, select the two unchanged labels and drag them to give them a little more room. All right. Next, resize the two right labels so they stretch basically all the way to the guideline. All right. So in other words, and I think the other thing we're supposed to do here, they didn't say it yet, but it's to right align these. All right. So stretch both these to give them a little more room. They should have both stretched, but only one did, and that's okay. All right, then we're supposed to grab both of these and stretch them so they basically, well, it's only, let me grab one at a time, but that's all right. There's the one. There's the other one. All right. So now it looks pretty much the same way it does in figure 8-21 on the bottom of page 277. As always, when we create a new vertical layout, we need to add auto layout constraints. The general idea is to pin the left side labels to the left side of the cell and the right side labels to the right. We'll also make sure that the vertical separation between the labels and the top and bottom of the cell between them are preserved. We'll link each left side label with the one on the right. So there is eight steps that make up all of page 278. First, click the name label. Hold down on shift and click the color label. Then choose Editor, Pin, Widths Equal. It says you'll see some auto layout warnings. When you do this, don't worry because we'll fix them as we add more constraints. With those two labels still selected, open the Size Inspector. And find the selection headed Content Hugging Priority. With the two labels still selected, open the Size Inspector and find the section headed Content Hugging Priority. If you don't see it, try deselecting and reselecting both labels. Okay. There it is. The values in these fields determine how resistant the labels are to expanding into extra space. We don't want these labels to expand at all. So change the value in the horizontal field from 251 to 500. Any value greater than 251 will do. We just need to make sure it's greater than the content hugging priority of the two labels to the right. All right. Okay, next, control drag diagonally and up from the name field towards the upper left corner of the table cell until the cell's background turns completely blue. In the pop up, pull down shift and select leading spaces to container margin and top space to container margin and press return. Control drag diagonally and down from the color label and basically do the same thing. All right, so I've done steps one, two, 
3, 4, and 5 out of 8. Step 6, control drag from the name label to its right. I didn't do that right. In the pop up, hold down shift and select two that I don't have here. Control drag from the name label to the label at its to its right. Okay, so I guess I maybe didn't drag it enough. Okay. In the pop-up, hold down on shift and choose horizontal spacing and baseline. And then press return. Control drag from the top label on the right toward the right edge of the cell containing from the top label on the right towards the right edge of the cell. In the pop-up, select trailing space to container margin. All right, similarly, we're going to do the next thing here in step seven. So we're going to control drag from the color label to the label on its right. In what comes up, we're going to choose horizontal spacing. Oops, try that again. Horizontal, whoop, oh, I, I got a shift. That's the problem here. So I want horizontal spacing, holding, oh, geez, Louise, I'm holding down a control and not shift. That's the problem. All right. So it comes up on here, choose horizontal spacing and baseline. And again, press return. Control drag from the bottom label on the right to the right edge. to be working. All right, in the pop-up, select trailing space to container margin. Not sure if it's selected or not, so let's try it one more time. And press return. Finally, select the content view icon in the document outline. <clears throat> and choose editor, resolve layout issues, update frames if it's enabled. Four labels should move into their final locations as shown in figure 821, which was on the previous page. And it looks pretty good as far as I can tell. It says if you see something different, try it over again. You know what? It looks fine. All right, turning up to page 279. Now we need to let Interface Builder know that this table view cell isn't just a normal cell, but an instance of our special subclass. Otherwise, we won't be able to connect our outlets to the relevant labels. Select the table view by clicking cell table identifier in the document outline. Bring up the identity inspector and choose name and color cell in the class control. 
Next, switch to the connect connections inspector, excuse me. where you'll see the color label and name label outlets. Drag from the name label outlet to the top label on the right and this and from the color label. So in other words, So from name label, which is right here, to there, and from color label, to here. And as far as I know now, that's correct. All right, to use the cell we just designed, we need to make a few simple changes to the view did load method. So it's probably a good time to do a file save. Let's go back and view our navigators and go back to project navigator. We'll bring up our viewcontroller.swift file and go down to our view did load, which is right here. All right, so we added the stuff that you see here, kind of in blue. All right, try to move this up just a, just a tad here. There we go. Just as we can associate a class with a reuse identifier, a table can be used to keep track of which nib files are meant to be associated with particular reuse identifiers. You may have noticed we didn't explicitly set the table row's height or implement anything like height for a wet index path. Despite that, the rows are now all of the correct height. And they explain on the bottom of page 279 that the way that the table figures figures out the height of a row is in the, if the height for row at index path method is implemented, it gets that by calling it. If not, it uses its own row height property. Okay. All right, turning up to page 380. So now we've seen a couple of approaches for building a custom cell. So the author says, what do you think? Well, what I think is, why don't we save this and run it and see if anything at all happens? The author, as far as I could tell, did not say to do that. So I'm going to try it right now. So I'm going to save, and I'm going to run. And if it fails, uh, I've followed all of, the, all of the author's steps, so we'll see what happens. Ideally, this will look exactly the same as the previous one that I showed you. Okay, the build succeeded, which is always a good first step. Then we're going to build another project to explore another aspect of tables. We're going to use a single table view, but divide it into sections. So we'll start on that in just a minute. <clears throat> That's going to have a list of names, and we'll do some monkeying around with that, monkeying being a relative term here. And as far as I can tell, that'll be the last one that's in the chapter. And I won't probably be able to finish that today. But I will get at least a start on it and then hopefully work on it tomorrow.
finish that up. Sorry I'm falling a little bit behind in these lectures. No excuses. I'm just sorry I'm falling a little bit behind. And there's our output. Good. So we now have done it both ways. Two of the three ways is what I should say here. All right. So even though I don't have to do this, I'm going to save one more time. Quit that. Uh, I'm going to quit the project. So, so far we have three projects that we've done in this chapter. They are simple table, table cells, and table cells two. Okay. In fact, probably a good time to grab simple table and copy it over into here. Table cells and copy it into here. And table cells too and copy it into here. That's what I'm going to end up putting on the P drive for you when we get done with the chapter. All right, page 280. Our next project will explore another fundamental aspect of tables, as I already mentioned. So let's go back into Xcode. All right, thanks. And we're going to create a new project. It's going to be another single view application. This time we're going to call it Sections. Swift with Universal, as we've been doing. And Create. All right, so we're supposed to go into the storyboard right away. Set that to four inch like I like to do. Boom. All right. We're supposed to bring in a table view. And I put it in so it's underneath, as we looked at before. And we're supposed to pin it. Pretty good as far as I can tell. We're going to add our constraints. Boom, that's done. Again, it's not perfect, but looks like it'll be all right at least. Why that's set up like that, but yeah, for some reason it reset these. I don't know why. Interesting. 16. Oh, it's a little funky, but it'll should should be okay. All right. <clears throat> We want to connect the data source connection to the view controller icon. Make sure the table view is selected. Bring up the attributes inspector. Change the table view style from plain to grouped. Save the storyboard 
and move along. I like that. The project needs a fair amount of data to do its thing. To save you hours of typing, we provided another property list for your tabling pressure, pleasure. Rather. Grab the file named stored data names.plist from the 08 section subfolder and drag it into your project sections folder in Xcode. So in other words, we want to bring up Finder. And I don't want to bring up Finder there. I want to go up to my desktop. Let's close this, this, and this, and this, and this, is that it for table cells too? I don't know. No. Uh, Grab the file from the 08 sections data folder. There is sections data, and there is the file. We want to copy, finish. All right, and there that brought that in. You can see the stuff that's in there. Good. All right, so that's been done. We're on. The up to page 281. Once it's been added, single click it to get a sense of what it does. So what you see here is virtually what you see in the book on figure 823, which takes up most of page 281. All right. So we're supposed to single click viewcontroller.swift. Make the class conform to the UI table view data source protocol and add a table cell identifier and create a couple of properties by putting in the code that's shown on the very bottom of page 281. Oops. We still have an error here, but that's because we haven't implemented anything for the view data source. Okay. And it is 7 o'clock. I'm going to go a little bit longer. But what you see on 282, 283, is they have you do a lot of typing. And then they tell you to run it on page 284. So I'm going to see if I can get that far before the end of the period today. But then I'll pick it up on 284. If I have time, I'd like to do this at home this afternoon. But my wife may have other plans for me. So, so open up the assistant editor. And use the jump bar. Okay, so we want what we want to do here is I'm going to bring up the storyboard. And then with the storyboard up here, I'm going to close a few things. And I'm going to bring up the assistant editor. Good. All right. Control drag from the table view and create an output.
All right, we want to just call this, it looks like, table view. Okay, now we have the following code in bold to the view did load method. Looks like I've got a, oh, all my errors have gone. Good. It says most of this isn't too different from what we've done before. Earlier we added property declarations for both a dictionary and an array. The dictionary will hold our data and the array will hold the sections sorted in alphabetic order. In view did load, we first registered the default table view cell class that should be displayed for each row using our declared identifier. Next, we created an NS dictionary instance from the property list and added it to our project and assigned it to the names property casting it accordingly. Next, we grabbed all the keys from the dictionary and sorted them to give us an ordered array. All right, now we're supposed to add the following code to the very end of the file here. So as always, I'm going to open up a little space by hitting enter several times. Okay. And nothing is lit up, so ideally everything was coded correctly. A little more code on the top of page 283, then we'll run the project, and that'll be it for this.
So it says these are all table data source methods. The first one we added specifies the number of sections. We didn't implement this, so we sit, we just were happy with the default setting of one. This time we're telling the table view to have one section for each key in our dictionary. So that's the one that's up here. It says return keys.count. The next method that's here calculates the number of rows in a specific section. In the previous example, we had only one section. This time we need to break it down by section. We do this by retrieving the array that corresponds to the section, returning a count from it. Right there. The next method that you see in there allows you to specify an optional header, and we simply return the letter for this group, which is the group's key. And in the next one here, we need to extract both the section key and the names array using the section row properties from the index path and then use those to determine which value to use. Now, according to this, <clears throat> we're done. But I still probably have a lot of blank space in here, so I want to remove some of it. And you can see that here. Not perfect, but it looks a lot better. So let's do a file save. <clears throat> let's attempt to run it and see if I've made any mistakes. Good sign. It succeeded. <clears throat> Next, they say, as a contrast, let's change our table view back to the plane style and see what a plane table with multiple sections looks like. Select the storyboard. Select the table view and use the attributes inspector to change it back to plain, save the project, and run it again. So the way it looks now, it should look very similar to what you see in figure 824 on page 285. Hopefully that's about to come up here. I'll go back and make the change, and then we'll pick it up next time on page 285. Looks like there's not a whole heck of a lot of code to do. So hopefully I can do that one more time. Oh well, something it doesn't like here, so it's giving me some debug message in here, so it's not printing anything out. So I'll have to go back between now and the next class, try to figure out what that is. I will do that, and I will talk to you then. So I'm going to quit the simulator. Oops, see. Try it again. Quit the simulator. Save one more time. Get out of Xcode. So again, this sections will be done for the next class. I might have, if I have time, I'm either going to tape and or I'm going to also put all the code in. So I might just put the code in if I only just have time to do that. All right. So talk to you next time.